Yeah, come in some more. Where's that? Hey, Lord, I have any problems. Father, we come to you today and humbly ask you again, Father, we ask you to forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins and our committed, Father, knowing that we are not Father, we pray for this anti-gun violence, Lord. We pray for the whole city, Lord, that they will be touched by the Spirit of the Lord. We pray for these young kids, Lord, Heavenly Father, to let them know that this group here very, very much loves them, Lord, Heavenly Father. They have a problem with love, Lord, Heavenly Father. We let them know that the quicks don't love them. The bloods don't love the Lord. It's a fantastic thing that you love this city. This is a beautiful city, Lord. And we're praying that everyone in here today will touch a soul, Lord. Touch one kid, Lord. If 50 men touch one kid, we have 50 young children. Lord. We thank you for all the leaders here. Brother Muhammad, Minister Miles, and Salam, for his son. Thank you, Lord, for the hard work that they are doing, Father. And we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
is a prayer rally. Because we know there's strength with this unity, and you got to have unity to have a community. Before we proceed with our program, we're going to ask a brother to come up and give us a few words. Uh, I see him all the time downtown Plainfield. Uh, some people might refer to him as a street corner preacher or a spiritual individual who comes and preaches the gospel of truth. And I seen him ride by a few minutes ago, approximately half an hour ago, and he seen us gathered. And he said to me, what's going on? I said, well, brother, the whole lot's going on. But what needs to be going on is you getting out of the car and joining us in this work. And he said, no problem. So without any further ado, I'd like to bring Brother Jesus up to the front. Uh, be mindful that we have other speakers. And we ask everybody to come to the mic to limit your remarks to two minutes. Thank you, brother. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. E caraba se tecere wo kochanda, o kokoro wo sanda la machia. It is a pleasure for me to be here once again and allow you to see the edification that come from above. Moses gave you the manna, I give you the spirit of bread. It is a pleasure for me to also meet the brother Mohammed that allowed me to come here and reverberate that spirit to you. We live in the last day, as the Bible says. And it's crucial for us to come together and let the world know that we are in unity. But let us be related with that unity with the concept of knowing what we are doing. A lot of people speak about unity, union, and relationship also. to speak about cohesiveness and all this work. But then if we do not know what we are doing, we're not doing nothing. We have to consider the concept of unity. Unity is love, number one. Number two is faithfulness, faithfulness, the faith that we move mountains. It doesn't matter what difficult the time is, anyway, we have the capacity to remove mountains. Those are two adjectivities that we have to consider today. today. So when we say that we are united together, we united with love, number one. Number two, we, got, we are children of Abraham, children of the faith. And there's no barrier, there is no opposition that we cannot overcome. For that reason, we can tell the devil, get the behind me, Satan. We got the power. We got the power. We have the hero in the third day with the picture. For that reason, we have the champion. The champion that can overcome any circumstances, any problem, any difficult loss of mercy. God is God. And there is no problem, no problem, no difficulty that God cannot overcome. That's the God. We are the overcomer because we are his children. We are his children. We are overcome. Therefore, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. We are the overcomer. And from today, day, my brothers and sisters, I would like to meet you once again because I have a lot of things to say to you. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added on to you. I wish I would have a little more time because I'm just getting warm. I'm just getting warm. <laughs> Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you. Um, moving on with our program, we have some guests that came all the way from New York City, Harlem, New York. We want to bring them on. They can say a few words and tell us about their program uh, and what they're involved in in this work in regards to New York City and Harlem. All right, Brother Julius. Uh, Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to be with you tonight because, you know, I used to live in Plainfield, and uh, I'm glad to see my brother Norman, who was sort of like under my tutelage when I was a security officer at Plainfield High. So I'm glad to see how this brother has come a long way. Pastor Wheeler over there. Another one of my students, Jacqueline, you know, and I'm very proud, you know, to see that you're doing this work. Um, what we do in New York, uh, since my days of Plainfield, I came out to New York, 
is pretty much what you, you know, what I would do anywhere. So whether, you know, when Plainfield was my home, I was a community person involved. New York is my current home, and I'm involved. And I want to not take long, but I want to just sort of paraphrase something that came out of the book The Prophet, written by Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran said that the wrongdoer cannot do his deeds without the silent consent of us all. So we posture sometimes and we want to point the fingers, but are we allowing certain things to go on? So you gotta open up your closet and be honest with yourself. You know, some of the, I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, I was a person out here in the streets doing certain things and it passed on the next generation with my uh, nephews and so forth. And you know, they would do certain things to make their money, but mama was, had her hand out. If you're making the money, you know, she wants some of that money. And let's be real here. So, you know, you take care of auntie and cousins, or whatever. And so we're being silent about a lot of things. And we know who's got the guns and who's doing whatever. But we're going to have to now take a stand to say we can't tolerate it anymore. But it starts with yourself first. See? You've got to change your way of thinking before you start changing other people's thinking. Pretty much, you know, that's it in a nutshell. You gotta, gotta be honest. Across 
the country to continue to have it exist. And people say, yeah, well, it's not my kid. Well, it's not your kid until it's your kid. And it's on your doorstep. And then those are the people who told me, it's not my kid, my kid is a good kid. They go to church, he's in the Boy Scouts, he got good grades. Well, what you gotta know is good kids pull triggers too. Check the jail, check the prison, check those doing state time. Because good kids get bullied, get beat up, get tired, they take their sneakers, take their jacket, and the kids, somebody say, look, all you gotta do is take this, take care of one of them, and that's what they do. So good kids pull triggers too. You can ask any of these kids that are locked up, that have been bullied, they will tell you why they did what they did, because they got tired. So this, I don't like to speak without telling people what they can do. I know we only have two minutes, I don't know how to do it in two minutes, but I will tell you, is there are some things you can do. You don't have to be uh, an apathetic bystander. You don't have to be the person that watches on the six o'clock news and say another kid died today, or my neighbor's son was shot, or Aisha, my, in, in my case, my nephew was in North uh, three weeks ago and was shot, and they wouldn't tell us his status. So I know that people. We don't have to stand by. There are things we can do in one, Sometimes we think that legislation, you know that word sounds kind of big, and it sounds like it's bigger than us, and like it's something we shouldn't be connected to. We should be connected to it. Because bills are what ha what's created, proposed to become law. And if we don't do the thing to make those bills that are laying on the table right now in some congressman's office waiting to be approved that will keep the gun out of poor communities, we are at fault for not doing anything, so we can do something about that. You can call your congressman. There's something called the universal background check, which will mean every time somebody go down south, where well, you can buy guns in abundance, put them in the back of a trunk, and pile that trunk up all day long, and drive them up here, that you won't be able to do that. There'll be a 72-hour wait period. Not only that, where that gun is going, whatever home that gun is supposedly going into, that home will be checked for mental illness and a whole host of other things. And the 72 hours is just the basic limit. If it needs to be more than that, it will be. That's a wait period on purchasing guns. The other thing is called micro stamping. It's a bill that's waiting to become law. I know I've been helping to support that for the last six years. I don't see why it's rocket science that when people purchase bullets, there can't be a stamp you know, because when you get a license, there's a number that identifies you, right. Right? right? Or if you get any kind of public assistance, there's a number that identifies you. If you get arrested, there's a number for life that identifies you, right? And then when you're born, there's a number that identifies you. So why can't we put a number on the bullet that will identify the, purchase, the person who purchased it so that those bullets out of that person's custody has to have some accountability. You follow me? So if we're able to track the gun and the bullet, people will be less likely, we're not saying it's a cure-all, but it's something that acts in between all of this easy transportation of guns into our community. The other thing is, is really the legislation that happens right in the neighborhood. Because we legislate some things to happen. We kind of close the window, pull the shade, act like we don't hear what we know that we hear when guns are being passed off in our neighborhood. And see, so don't tell me about uh, snitches get stitches and all of that, because when your son is murdered and you gotta put him in a box, you would have wish you would have told all that you knew. See, because we losing them to a box either way, either in the grave or in the prison, and they ain't coming home. They trying to keep our children because it's running the industrial prison complex. That's a whole nother conversation. So either we make a decision to take control where we are in our community, where we live, pay taxes, elect officials. We can't elect them to do nothing. They have to do something or else your vote is wasted. Your ancestors did all of that to create the opportunity, whether you came here as an immigrant or you were on this land, to create a way for you to have the right to vote. And if you are not exercising it with people who will lift up your community, you are wasting your time, yes. you are doing your children an injustice, yes. and you are helping to bury them. Yes. You understand? Yes. Yes. So we got some work to do. You can look up on congress.gov, put in gun violence. You will see 
all of the bills. There are a lot of them. So you may not want to support the ones I'm telling you. That's okay. Support something. And in your neighborhood, if you've been watching Tito and Poppy and Bubba and Day Day and Ray Ray and Daquan doing the wrong thing, go from little being cute and good, and now you see them hanging out with flying colors and hanging out with people talking about guns and hurting somebody, and you watching them every day, and you're not doing nothing, and you say, I see him going bad. Well, you just as bad as him going bad if you're not doing nothing. So we got some work to do, family. This is not a beat up. I hope I said something to move your spirit, to help save a life, because I can't tell you how I felt when they said your nephew got shot. All of the kids, I stood over that bled out. We couldn't stop the bleeding. They got shot in the neck, shot in the groin, major arteries. You wish you could stop it, but you can't. You pray with the mother that the child live and not die, but you see life leaving. It's a horrible thing. When y'all see it, it's at the funeral and the body is dressed up and it looks so nice. But you should go to the hospital when the mother is praying for the child to live. And you'll understand what I'm talking about. When the blood keep coming out and the doctor come out all nice and dressed up and say, well, you know, we did all we could do. That means it's done. It's done. It's done. That mother goes back to look in that room where her child will never, ever return. All his things like he left them or she left them. And she can't bring them back. All she can do is wish and smell his clothes and try to remember the last time she fixed something that he liked. We got to stop this. This is sick. And it's even sicker when we stand by and watch it. I'm sorry, family. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Moving right along with our program, I will ask, like to ask, a sister and a brother who I've been knowing for over 40 years, who unfortunately lost her son to gun violence here in the city of Plainfield. I'd like for her and her husband to come up and share a few words and thoughts with us in regards to her son, Sister Ruthie Twine and her husband, Brother Twine. Thank you. Bring them all the way around to applause. Yeah. This is the mother. Man who lost his life to gun violence. Hello, everyone. Peace. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for giving me the strength to come up here. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. First of all, I want to thank God for letting me be up here this evening. I lost my son in 2008 by drive-by shooting on West 3rd and Monroe. That was the worst call I could have ever got. Just standing up here going back to memory, it's like, gonna break down, but. Take your time. Thank God for call for the anti-violence. Family. Sorry, we got a little confused in there. Uh, I'd like to just thank everybody that made remarks, the words, uh, the sister that just lost her son. Can't even express 
feelings that she may be going through. I just give you all the support that I possibly can as another young black man just standing here as a representative of the ones that's not out there trying to help one another. So I just pray for you and your family, and it's for all the victims, the eight victims that have been slain this year. I'm, I'm a play, Plainfield native. I was born in Muhlenberg Hospital. I went to school in Muhlenberg Hospital. I went to uh, Max Mill School. I went to the high school. I lived on the east end. I lived on the west. So I know Plainfield pretty much in and out. Uh, but I'm a writer, I'm an activist, and I'm a poet. And I just want to share a piece that I wrote back in 2011. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Back in 2011. Back in 2011, we had 11 murders. We were working in Plainfield at that time, myself, my father, the United Youth Council, uh, working with uh, a truce at the time. They had events with other uh, anti violence groups at the time, and we were all trying to do that work, try to. Uh, to stem this problem. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Appreciate that. So back to uh, saying, this is a poem that I wrote back in 2011 in reference to the murders that were going on at that time, and here we are again, 2016, eight murders in. This poem was entitled Streets. After the program that we have with United Youth Council, striving to re-educate each and every one in the streets. It's hard to concentrate with all this murder and beat. Reading about the violence to know what's happening in my inner city makes me weep. What happened to the love we seek? What happened to the gift to think? Us, who once strive for peace, brotherhood and sisterhood in the streets when we expressed our culture and embraced our heritage, built up our community and made better days for the kids. Too many popping their heads, shot down, shot slapped, locked down or knocked down, can't even watch a clock go around in the ground or a jail cell there. But when you free your mind, your freedom is anywhere. Bring back the times running in your underwear, mama chasing behind and your father really cared. That time is here now for the taking. We would miss out if we don't become what we're bound above Satan. No more unnecessary death and hate and drop the acting. If you ain't acting, then act right with your behavior. Respect your grandma and your neighbor. We all blue collar workers at heart and our race is a receipt for the labor. Struggle to progress, though it won't come easy. Hold faith, you're destined for success. God bless, stop the violence, it's nonsense. Makes less sense when you make more sense. Dirty paper is it an investment. A career can quadruple in any drug dealer, drug peddler, the devil me. A salary and settlements, big talk, but bigger pockets can stash your legal relish, man. I'm not in nobody's hustle. I'm simply pre presenting a different type of hustle. Fighting to provide for a family by any means, which means to love you. If nobody does, I do. All the troublemakers and thugs, too. Why? I was misguided just like you. They say we lost our way. Pants sad, because that's a fad. Some say it's here to stay. Forget when tight clothes, tight clothes was already in style. Except we wore button-ups, slacks, and crocodiles. Not a pimp, but out of this world. She had so much soul where it went. Guess what all the hoes we say to these girls? Oh no, not gonna change until we commit. Me daddies and homes. Show boys how to protect themselves as men with their domes, not crones. Fists make break bones, but you live and forgive to forget loans. Payback is a sadistic syndrome. Retaliation keeps the cycle when black brothers in the system lost the victims and the slaves' mentality never gets gone. Violence is not the answer. Neither is pushing crack to our people, which is killing us with cancer. So we add to this with hammers. Stereotypical to be caught in the slammer. Street strike plus you meet a homie in Atlanta. Now you know folks who know folks, but your mind is so broke, you kill the wrong folks when the dust clears, still your folks. Oh, this is no joke, brother. Imagine the murder of your kids and your mother. Band-aid, the pain with wakes and t-shirt stains, but the hurt of this wound has no cover. See it on your face because you're feeling in your gutter. Your mind sure hungers. 
for sanity and serenity. Want to help out the situation but don't know how and probably already out of energy. Why, why, why are we crying in people's memory? They were too young to go. No, we can't let this be. We're killing the future of our community. Taking a life or taking somebody's family off the earth just all for another eulogy? Obama changed this mentality. I'm not asking Obama to, I'm asking you. Like Obama, be all you can be, and this madness isn't you. Shooting is too easy. Ending another sister or brother's life destroys the structure of the entire black family. You were born to be greater than the last. That doesn't mean skipping or staying back in class. Every generation should exceed the one that proceeds, so where do we measure against the past? It'll take unity. Not the division we can't create with sets. We can all rep RBG. Red for the blood we shed. Black for the skin we wear. Green for the land we're from. Mother Africa, the birthplace of everyone. My home plain field is the Queen City. The kings within you are many. Same are the queens. The earth to rely on and need. Media may say you will die from the greed. To be the grimiest by killing more lives. That's a lie and not what I see. Please show your beauty, not your booty. Be who you were meant to be, cutie. And salute, my G. Any soldier in the struggle saving brothers who look like you and me. Let's take back our community. Get back to where we should proudly be able to say, PLFD, be funk in the slump, not for eternity. That goes for any inner city. Once we change our mentality, we can end these casualties. Till then we rally, marching like Martin till we find peace increase rapidly amongst our people at warp speed, a sure need for us that we, instead of blood cuz, share love in the street, instead of blood cuz, share love in the street, instead of blood cuz, share love in the streets, more love to the streets, peace. All right, at this time, I'd like to bring the National uh, Director of the United Youth Council Incorporated, an orchestrator and an organizer behind the Plain for Anti-Violence Coalition, my father, Salam Ismail. Yeah. yeah! Yeah! Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm a little tired, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Forgive my uh, beloved brother, Anthony, my brother, Anthony, my son. Brother Awa. Yeah. Also, you know, I don't want to take no credit without giving credit to Almighty God, who is our everything. And also, recognizing on the ground level, two brothers I wanted to certainly pay homage and tribute to, and that is Brother. Norman Muhammad, who is the president of the Journal of the Plainfield Anti-Violence Coalition, co-chair, brother, brother, North, brother uh, Maurice, who is the co-chair of the Plainfield Also, some of our supporters uh, from the Unitarian, Unitarian Church who have been there from the beginning when we started, and they had all our marches, and so forth and so on. Uh, Brother Mark and Sister, I can't think of their name right now. Yeah. Beautiful people, we love you, and we um, want our strong supporters. You know, you hear a lot about the social media, how that mechanism rides on our social media and our treasurer. Uh, Sister Alma, she's over there. She do, she do everything. She do social media. She she, she do all that stuff. Also, some dignitaries. I call them dignitaries. You know, uh, I think Big Brother Steve Hatch over there from the one of the most powerful organizations in the state, one of the people's organization for progress. Local chapter president here. Uh, Councilwoman Bridget Rivers over here. I call him Dandy because he's my man, Dandy Dunn. He was done by right here, long time. All right, and he's our sergeant of arms with the Plainfield Anti-Violence Coalition. 
and sister, um, uh, oh, I sit down. Sister Diane, who uh, public relations person for the, she takes all the pictures and what have you, better than the star ledger. And the brother, a uh, videographer, he's, uh, he's, uh, the, well, he's my personal videographer, but also he's the community videographer, and his, and his video work was just appeared on NewJersey.com, and, uh, Bassa News, brother, Reverend Dr. Zachariah, right there. And the street pastor, we call him a street pastor, he pastor the church, but he's also a street pastor. Brother Wendell, yeah. Reverend Dr. Wendell. Um, just wanted to kind of uh, recognize some folks. Some of my arm, my right arm, Brother Saeed. He's a, the, the Brother Saeed, raise your hand. That's, my, that's our DJ right there. So you know, you can tell DJ. Also playing for a high time power school with the DJ. Hire him. He comes to you, but not to you. Uh, from you, from you, fellowship, Pastor Dolly, Hammer, Hamlin. Not everybody. Uh, who else? Somebody. Else. Oh, and my, and the streets. He talked about the streets. Uh, 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 it's a, it's a cadet group we have in Elizabeth at our center called Street Striving to Reeducate Each and Every One in the Street. It's a, uh, it's like a military style group where we take young folks who pretty much steer in the wrong way and that kind of stuff. He's my chief of staff and he also head our street operation brother Dominique Thunderbird. He's the guy with the flag. He's quiet, what have you. Don't mess with him because he's an ex-Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> and our two seconds. Which I'm, I'm going to introduce the, our two secretaries. Certainly the, the family of, uh, of the Briggs family, the Jones family in my conclusion. But I want to say I'm very grateful to this day. Initially this day started out, the, uh, the purpose of this day started out to bring more attention, to bring awareness and ignite the community, engage the community. Uh, we had initially planned to go to 13 towns, so we did. We didn't do a whole lot of walking because the weather was 100 and so degrees. A few people even had to go to the hospital at the beginning of our bond. So we, we kind of adjusted. But we did go to Newark. We went to different pillars of Newark where people are in pain. And we talked to folks in the projects and some of the most toughest areas of Newark. We went to Irvington, you know, where you see folks maybe leaned over and bent back, but you know, they heard the good words we shared with them. We stopped off in Elizabeth on the courthouse. And I'll tell you about that. We had a little pit stop there. And we went to Roselle and Linden and made our way here to Plainfield, 15.7 miles of city, 13 city. And we're here Amen. to join and company with all of you. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to announce, which I'm going to announce later on publicly Tuesday. Here's what we need to do locally. And I'm talking about Plainfield. First and foremost, whatever organization, whatever group you're from, whatever church you're from, whatever civic organization, fellowship, or whatever, uh, sorority, fraternity, you need to be a part of the Plainfield Anti-Violence Coalition. It doesn't take away from anything else you're doing, whether you're dealing with housing issues, job issues, educational issues, civil rights issues. This organization specifically and exclusively deal with the issue of violence, gun violence, or what have you. So you need to be a part of that. Brother, Brother Norman and Brother Maurice leading this organization. I'm here to only give advice and give whatever we can to support. And just past Saturday, the Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton announced on his radio show and his uh, regular Saturday morning meeting that he's now a supporter of the Plainfield Anti-Violence Coalition, and I will be making some plans for him to come and, and officially endorse the organization. The sister, the sister here, before I go into my speech, the sister here, um, Aisha Sakur, I wanted to introduce her. It was just vaguely done. 
She's also the national, she's a national, she head of the national committee of the National Action Network under Reverend Al Sharpton, anti-violence, uh, anti-violence initiative nationwide. So she's not a local person. She, those bills that she mentioned, those federal bills, well, she's part of the initiator of that bill with the National Action Network and a coalition of other groups around the nation. So she ain't no low cookie. And if you go to Harlem and you hear, you say Shakur, you know who you talk about. Her mother got history, a big history of the, of the whole, the serious, the serious time of the, of the black, black liberation movement. And that's what created this woman. And she got a mouth. And she ain't no joke. You know what I'm saying? So, and you should see her, her army of, of groups. She got an organization which is now contract with the city. It's a, it's a, uh, a it's, and we're going to talk about that. They're going to raise a meeting so y'all can talk and, and see how we can bring that funding here. They get funded there. She talked about, they said, there's guys that are trained to go out into the community and actually interact on those corners, you know, to try to prevent whatever they can to, to curb down the violence. You know, so, so she is not just some job cookie. I want that to be known. Now, what we have to do is say two things. One, that we gotta be committed to this, this effort long-termly, and two, making sure our local, I'm glad we have a, 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 uh, a council, a, a government official here, because what's got to happen here, everybody has to have a responsibility. Eight murders in a town with 50,000 people is crazy. And a city that's not poor by any shape or form has it. Um, I brought some of my folks to him before they said, damn, well, where's the hood at? I brought them where the hood at. They said, that's the hood? So there's no reason why eight boys and girls, one woman, I believe, dead. And it seemed to be the same victim, the same type of victim, mostly African-American, mostly African-American male. The victim and the victimizer. Why? Why this thing has continued to happen all across this nation? In Chicago, just last week, reached 500 murders. 500 in Chicago, which is the highest it's ever been in since, I mean, Al Capone days. That's how deep that is. In Chicago, mostly black, mostly young, mostly male. And this is consistent that's happening across this nation. And not too many people will talk about. Now she talked about some federal bill. There is a bill that was passed that was put in effect here in New Jersey. However, our local legislators and our assembly and our Senate have, have not pushing and raised it up. I'm gonna talk about that. The bill was S24330, S which is a bill that was initiated by Senator Ray Lesniak and, um, and uh, also signed off by Assemblyman Green and many others. The bill was to create a commission, a study commission, Back in 2013, which that happened, last October, those nine members came up with an 82-page summary which gives recommendation on a city and county and state level on what should be done based on what their finding was. I'm the co-chair of that commission. One of the things, and I'm going to ask you to take this, one of the things that asked was that on a city level, that and on the county level could put into place an office or a division on violence prevention and intervention. Right now I'm in discussion with the county, Union County, maybe the first in the nation to have such. But all the cities like Plainfield can have some. Brother Richard, Assalamu We go back to the 80s and 90s. And so we can do that here, Mayor Matt, City Council, and they have every every municipality have a copy of the bill report. Every municipality, all 566, all 21 counties have those recommendations. But they'll sit if you don't say nothing about it. And anybody want copies, certainly I'll be, be glad to email it out to you. So that's one thing we could do on the government level, like the sister said. 
on a local level, we got to continue to build organization that's led by Brother Norman and Brother Maurice. Otherwise, it wouldn't make no difference. It wouldn't have a difference. We need to bring those families, those families. Good to see a, a couple of families out here, but there's eight families, eight families that which is just this year. I'm not talking about 30 years ago when we talked. We're going to talk about Jones family, but this right now, eight families just happened in the last five months. Youngest one was 19 years old. Those families have to be just a part of the morning, which I understand, as also part of the solution. If nothing else but showing up to rallies like this, so that child won't die in vain. The sister mentioned about what happened in 2008. I, I have a story too. What took me here to this day. One of the reasons why I'm not doing a lot of the civil rights work no more, Brother Hatchet, because in 2008, my godson was leaving a party and he went to his friend's house after the party. He went into the, his uh, uh, apartment complex, by the way, right next to a street I grew up in, the same street where they named the street after my mom. They put a sign up right there, you'll see Carrie Thomas, that's my mom. Right only less than 150 feet away, they shot seven bullets into Terry Murray. Killed him dead. Now let me tell you something. Little Terry wasn't part of the Great Crip. And, um, but never had, never, he had a little, he had some issues. His father got his counsel, his mother ran a day kid. Good, good family. Man, no dummies, bastards, green, all that stuff. But he got hooked on the streets. And if I say that, sister, they don't know what that means. I'm not saying hooked on drugs, hooked on the street. But people ask me about how this could happen in Plainfield. It's the mindset of the streets they hooked in, not the dope. And once they get hooked on the mindset, then anything goes. You could be living here in Tiddy Wattiddy, it doesn't matter. They call up in all the madness that comes with that. And that's what happened to him. And I was angry when his father said, Big bruh, they got him. I said, what? They got a little tag. And so I, I just, I got angry. I'm like, I'm sure you all was. You lost a loved one. I got angry, you know, and I held a press conference. And a lot of press came out. Nine, ten, all of, everybody came out. And the first time, only twice I ever cried in public. But that time I did. And it was the worst thing I could ever have done in public. One of the worst thing I could ever have done. Because people love me in the list of They love me in the list of And when they see me crying, it created a war. And I beat myself on, I said, I'll never, ever do that again. I got to stay strong and in leadership. Two weeks later, two more people were shot. Shot dead. In retaliation. Oh, it got deep that time. That was 2000, it was, listen, it was 17 murders, high as it been a long time. So, that day, I said, I'm going to help to organize I'm going to use my ability, and I called in Reverend Shaw, and all different people I know on the national level helped me build this organization. And I went to, I talked to leaders in 22 cities, and we organized the New Jersey Anti-Violence Coalition. And from there, we pushed that bill. That bill that was passed into law, that commission study, which came from, 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 uh, from Patterson to Atlantic City to Camden to Trenton under this leadership. So I'm not going nowhere. As long as this issue stays, I'm not going. People were trying to direct me back to the Civil Rights Act. You get famous for that, Salon. Deal with police brutality. You know, you've been all the news. And I know this stuff right here. The violent stuff, you don't get that much press, as you, as you can see. You know what I'm saying? But let some black person get be beaten by the police. And you'll have press, you have people out, you have news every day, all day. So as, as quiet as the media want to let this stuff, this uh, whatever, just black people killing black people, we cannot stand back and let that happen. We have to make this, just as much as the shooting is commonplace, our activism got to be commonplace. I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? So this is real work, folks. This is real work. So I'm going to keep coming back to Plainfield. I'm going to help build 
this organization with Brother Norman, I'm going to give him as much support. I'm going to bring more national folks in the Plainfield to, to bless this organization because I think a lot of cities need to get back to this. Some of the organizations that, that we organized a couple years ago, they got a little soft. Newark need a lot of help. I'm going to try to do what I can to help Brother Roz and people there. But I know if, if Plainfield's strong, Elizabeth's strong. Elizabeth's strong, North have no other reason but to get strong. So if one's strong, we all strong. And I'm just saying to you all today, don't let these moments of opportunity get by.